Well, hello, this is uh, Steve at the Life and Sad Ending channel. And as some of you may have already heard, um, uh, Suzanne Summers has passed away. And I just thought I'd come on live here so that we could all talk about uh, Suzanne and some of our remembrances of her career. Um, I did want to be able to take phone calls, but unfortunately I was trying to figure that out. And uh, I'm not much good at the uh, tech side of things, so I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do to do that unless someone here has the expertise to tell me how to do it. So uh, I see we have a few people in the room here. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Let's see if I can get this on the big screen here. There we go. I can read your comments up front here now. Oh, that's good. All right. Thanks, Danny and Deborah and everybody here. How many people do we have here? Let's see. Where do I see that? Hmm. Whoops. I just lost the whole screen. <laughs> uh, it's no laughing matter, but. Sometimes you got to laugh. Yeah, apparently uh, she died one day short of her 77th birthday. And, um, you know, the shocking thing about the uh, passing of Suzanne Summers is that she seemed young for so long. I mean, she was one of those kind of people who didn't seem to age. So the years go by rather quickly. And then you suddenly realize, you know, she's 76 years old. I, I guess that happens with us as well. Um, we have several people in here. Uh, John Taylor. Uh, yeah, John, we're talking about uh, the passing of Suzanne Summers. Chrissy Snow from uh, Three's Company. I'm sure everyone remembers Suzanne Summers. Yeah, Deborah, that it really is a, a sad situation. Yeah, the, I guess from what I read online, her family was there because they were going to be celebrating her birthday, her 77th birthday. Oh, thank you, uh, Ms. Puddles Crazy Frog. Now there's a handle for you. <laughs> yeah, Donnie says it's hard to believe. Yes, it is very hard to believe. I was shocked. You know, a lot of times you'll see a celebrity has passed away and, uh, you know, you figure, well, they're old, but like I said, Suzanne Summers never really seemed that old. I mean, because I guess she had uh, plastic surgery and that sort of thing. I know there was some controversy about some of the uh, regimens that she followed to uh, try to keep her youth. Uh, and of course she suffered from, uh, breast cancer from a, since about 2001, I think. So she had battled that for a long time. And just this last summer, she had announced that it had returned. So she was tough. I mean, uh, you know, they say she lost her battle with breast cancer, but like my wife said, it's more like she won her battle with breast cancer because she, she lived to an age that a person could expect to live to. So. That's a victory. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Danny Staten. Another piece of my youth is gone. Yeah, Danny. Uh, isn't that the truth? I mean, that's what it really comes down to. I mean, Suzanne, as they say, is in a better place, but uh, it's a wake-up call to us, us that are still here that the time is ticking away. Um, William Waldrop says, uh, our... Rest in peace to Suzanne. She was funny in Three's Company. I like when she did that snorting when she laughs. Yeah, didn't Sandra Bullock? I think she kind of stole that in a couple of her movies. Uh, handcuffed. Patrick Doran says Handcuffed was Su Suzanne Summer's favorite episode in th on Three's Company. Yeah, I'm I'm read about the uh, <clears throat> controversy she had back in the day. She and her husband 
Alan Hamill, who she was married to since 1977 at, you know, when that show first came on and she had her success, they were, he was kind of like blamed like a Yoko Ono for causing her to leave that show. But all she wanted, you know, she was making about $30,000 at the time for Three's Company and it was a big, big hit. And after a few years, she thought that she deserved more money. And so she asked for a $150,000 an episode and 10% of the, uh, 10% of the profits from the show, I guess, 10% ownership. And of course, back in those days, the producers and the network, they just weren't having that. I mean, they would give that money to Carol O'Connor or Alan Alda, but they weren't going to give it to uh, Suzanne Summers. And it, it was kind of a sexist thing, I think, back in the day. Uh, I mean, all three of them probably deserve that kind of money. I don't know how much John Ritter or Joyce DeWitt were getting, but yeah, she she deserved a, a, a pay raise. Let's see some of the other comments. Jeff Hensley says, I pray she was saved. Danny says, she may have been my first teenage crush. Well, she, she did have that uh, famous poster. Uh, let's see. Her and Farrah Fawcett both. Uh Ms. Puddles Crazy Frog says, sending hugs to everyone. Keithy, e., hello, hello, Keithy. E. Sorry, Keith, I'm not I'm not having any uh, luck trying to get the phone working here. I wanted to try to bring it up in a different browser here so people could actually hear the caller. I'm going to have to work on that. I thought I had it figured out, but now all of a sudden I forgot how to do it just that quick. So welcome. Thanks for showing up, Keith. Uh, Thrash Pondo uh, Pons is here. Hi, Bob. Uh, just heard from our friend, Danny, rest in peace, Miss Summers. Yeah, it, uh, it's, a, a terrible thing. Like I say, it was a shock, you know, years ago, um, she, uh, for a couple of years, she did uh candy camera. They brought candy camera back with Peter fund and she was very good on that show. And, you know, you'd see her through the years. She did dancing with the stars and she did so much. She had, she had another a successful series on ABC on Friday nights uh, with uh, Patrick Duffy, 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 <laughs> Patrick Duffy in Step by Step. And I never really watched that show, but it was on for like seven years. I mean, it was a popular show. Uh, yeah, welcome, Thrash Pondo. Thanks for checking in on my little show here. <laughs> Let's see. Marie Christensen says she was a health fanatic, but sometimes God makes the decisions. Rest in peace, Suzanne. Nadia Villarreal, my condolences to her husband. Yeah, yeah, he's still living. Uh, Alan Hamill is his name. Like I said, they've been married since 1977. So th that was a long-lasting marriage. Uh, and the, the fact that... She, she was tough. Oh, yeah. Somebody here, uh, Nay says, uh, brings up about the thigh master. I almost forgot about the thigh master. I mean, the, those commercials were gold, man. I, I mean, and the thing probably actually worked if you used it, but most of those things uh, require you to uh, <laughs> do the, the workout. The thigh master, though, that's fu so funny. Uh, she's had another infomercial for some sort of poncho that you could wear like three ways and you, you could look sexy with this, this silly poncho thing. I, I saw a picture of it here earlier when I was getting ready to do the show. I wish I could put it up on the screen, but my uh, computer skills aren't so good. It's amazing that I, I'm actually on live here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Sonic Jet says, God bless you, Suzanne Summers. If I'm missing your comments here, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to, to do well, I, but I do appreciate your comments because without your comments, I really don't have anything, anything to add. Nikki Johnson, uh, says what caused it? Well, Nikki, uh, they, uh, Suzanne had announced in July of this year that the uh, breast cancer had returned. So I guess it was just, you know, when you get to be a certain age, you can only fight for so long. And, <clears throat> but like I say, she had, uh, remained young looking for so long that it was a shock. Now, let me see. I had something here I wanted to talk about. Uh, she, uh, 
what was it? Uh, oh, you know, they said here that she had appeared in Playboy, and you, you're going to find this hard to believe, but I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, as far as her health, she did bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, and she had written a book called Ageless. And it was a pretty controversial thing to do at the time. And uh, she was criticized for not being uh, scientifically sound, what she was doing, or healthy. But, I mean, if she had cancer and was able to fight it off for over 20 years, there might be something to it. Um, I, Nadia says, I wonder if she was in breast cancer remission. Yeah, probably. That's probably what happened because sometimes with these uh, treatments, they can uh, fight it off for quite some time. Uh, Cauldron Moon says, we love you very much, Suzanne. Please give our beloved John Ritter a big hug from us fans. You know, her and John Ritter, <clears throat> after this thing with uh, Three's Company, there was a period of time where her and John Ritter didn't speak to each other for 20 years and they didn't really reconcile till just shortly before he died in, in 2003. So there were hard feelings there and I didn't really know that. Uh, but you know, there, uh, she really was criticized for asking for more money. And I, I don't like, I'd be curious to know what, how much he was making at the time, you know, uh, let's see, we have, um, uh, Oh, I see Griffin O'Neill is here. Hi, Griffin. Griffin shows up uh, many times um, here. Uh, it says, this is heartbreaking. I've known her since I was young. Rest easy, Suzanne. Did you know her personally, Griffin? Or just from, from the TV? Um, uh, let's see. Danny says, no doubt she was my favorite dumb blonde character of all time. Nobody done it better. That is so true. I mean, it's such a stereotypical thing, but she really knew how to play it up. And um, I bet, I bet if you have a thigh master, you can put it on eBay right now. You could probably make some money. That's not, that's terrible thought. Well, who would do that? <laughs> uh, Anthony says Three's Company was my favorite show growing up. I admired her, admired her so much for being a strong woman. Yeah, and she actually was in real life, you know, asking for my, uh, money, uh, more money. Uh, Griffin sells. Yeah, Griffin O'Neill says, yes, she lived down the street in Santa Monica. Hey, that's great, Griffin. You know, being wh where you were when you were young, you probably got to be around a, a lot of famous people, and it probably didn't seem like much to you because, uh, you know, you were in a famous family like that. Catherine says, I'm so sad to hear of her passing. Uh, yeah, she's, she's the sheriff. I think the name of that Danny was, she's the sheriff. I don't think it lasted very long. Keithy's saying hello to Miss Puddles or Ms. Puddles. I don't want to get that wrong. Let's see. Uh, so if you'd like to chime in with some of your memories in the chat here, some of the favorite things that you remember from Suzanne Summers, it, it's, it's one of those things. It's kind of like when Johnny Carson died, you know, uh, people pass, but you have a special connection to some celebrities in some way. And I think Suzanne Summers was like that. Uh, another one would have been Kirstie Alley. I mean, when, when they pass away, it's just like a real blow, even though you didn't know them personally. William says, hi, Suzanne Summers died. So sad. Rest in peace. Now she doesn't have to worry about COVID or mask or social distancing. Well, that's true. All her earthly problems are over and that's, uh, that's the way of life and death. It's, it's, it's a, it's a sad ending. Yeah. So, yeah, Griffin says she, she was the nicest lady ever. She seemed really nice, you know, and you can tell, you can tell when you see somebody on television, whether they come through as a, that they're really nice or not. And, uh, I was watching the Rockford Files. Oh, I guess it's been a couple years ago. 
And like in the first episode, Suzanne Summers shows up as this uh, girl. She, she doesn't have any lines, I don't think, in the whole thing. But you recognize her right away. And of course, everybody remembers her from uh, being in the uh, Thunderbird in uh, American Graffiti, the one Richard Dreyfuss sees, who, who said, she said, mouths out the window that she loves him. <laughs> and he spends the rest of the movie looking for her. Lolly says, is this true? Her husband must be devastated. Yeah, unfortunately, it came over the wire. I saw it was about uh, 321. And um, I was, uh, as mo on most Sundays, I was taking a nap. And I picked up the computer and I went online. And it's the first thing I saw. And I was just like, wow. I just, I, I couldn't believe it, you know? So, like I say, it's like, a, a part of your youth is gone. And so it's, it's a wake up call. Uh, let's see who else is here. Tina says, Suzanne and Jack made up with the help of his wife. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Her birthday would have been tomorrow, a day short of 77 years old. Yes, that's true. Anthony, I read that. And, um, uh, that always reminds me of a thing we, we say here at the house. Um, Whenever anything bad happens, you can always make it a little bit worse if you say after that and so close to Christmas. And so the, the birthday thing is kind of like that, I guess. Um, not that it really makes any difference. It's just a, an odd thing. Uh, Brian says they tried to re replace her on Three's Company, but it really was never the same without her. We love you, Suzanne. Yeah, I remember, remember when the contract negotiations were having a problem. She, um, a lot of times they'd have, in the contract, she had to be on the program, but she would only be on for like a minute. So she'd be calling uh, Jack or, or whatever from her, she was living with her mother, and she'd call on the phone. She wouldn't actually be in the same place. Griffin says, cancer sucks. Well, you got that right, brother. You got that right. And, you know, most people, it's terrible. You're going to die of heart disease or cancer. It's a terrible, terrible disease. Catherine says, I've been fighting breast cancer for 20 years, and I was shocked she had an aggressive form of breast cancer. Yeah, she she was tough like you, Catherine. She, she was able to fight it off for a long, long time. Deborah says, 77 years is too much too short, and she had such a beautiful singing voice. You know, Deborah, I don't remember her singing that much. Uh, I probably have seen her. I was surprised to see that she was on the first episode of The Love Boat. <laughs> there's a there's a factoid for you. Thrash Panda says she wanted to play Jack's wife on the Robin's Nest spinoff. Studio shot that down. Well, you know, she was marked then as as being difficult. You know, and whenever you try to stand up for yourself and get what you deserve. People want to call you difficult. Uh, Keith E says 130 people in the chat. That's impressive. Yes, Keith, that is impressive. That is a record. You're right, Keith. So I appreciate everybody tuning in. I, I don't really have much to say, but I thought people might want to have a chance to express what they think uh, to a group um, about the passing of Suzanne Summers and, um, Sin, Cindy says uh, she had an act in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the big stars, uh, Debbie Reynolds, and they, they work up these cabaret acts for Vegas. Um, Catherine says, Mike, sincere condolences. I might have read that already. Anthony says, my mom is also 76. She has a diagnosed, but thankfully still around. Strong women should be cherished. Griffin says, I have to check in with some people, but I'll check in soon. Keep up the amazing work, sir. Well, Griffin, I sure appreciate you ch chiming in because uh, you personally know a lot of these people, and uh, I, I like to hear your comments, and thanks for checking in with us. Thank you. Uh, Dennis Forrester says, rest in peace. John Roberts says, I loved her in the classic movie American Graffiti back in 1973. Yeah, I, I mentioned that earlier, John. Uh, she was great in that movie. And she looked very good in the back of that uh, Thunderbird. Uh, 
Well, she wasn't in the back. Now that was the two seater. It had those opera windows. I'm getting confused. <laughs> those little porthole windows. You remember that? Anyway, Nancy says, I only remember her popularity and beauty. Well, that's the thing to remember. Danny says, yeah, I was diagnosed with non-Hopkins Hopkins back in 2011. It was rough. I went into full remission in 19. Keto for life. Yeah, Danny, I've tried to do keto on and off because sugar is bad for you and it'll kill you. And carbs are bad for you and they'll kill you. And just about everything's bad for you and it'll kill you. So I've tried to do keto because I know it's uh, one of those things that feeds cancer if, is if you eat too much sugar. So they say, I'm not an expert. So I'm not a medical expert. It's just my opinion about keto. So don't say, don't take what I say as any gospel. Um, Laura says, heartbroken. I love Suzanne. Uh, Don says, thank you for letting us know it was your channel that I first found out about her. Well, Dan, I, I'm, I'm glad you saw it because, uh, you could chime in here and, and have something to say about it. Uh, John Roberts says she was a heart throb, throb that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> Danny says, good news. Most vodka is sugar free. Well, that is true. But Danny, you know, alcohol turns to sugar. And the liver doesn't care whether it's a, a donut or something like that. So you really have to watch it. Anthony says, as someone who works in a hospital for 13 years, you see a lot of death. Unfortunately, death is never easy to deal with. That is the truth. Uh, Nay says, were you more of a Ropers or Mr. Furley guy? Well, that's a, that's a good question, Nay. Because... The Ropers, the Ropers really got, got cheated in that whole deal. Let me tell you, because they gave them that show and then they, uh, uh, finished the contract and then, then they canceled the show. Uh, so, but I, I like the Ropers better. I hate to say it because I'm the world's biggest Don Knotts fan, but I like the Ropers better for some reason. Um, uh, Ray Green. Ray Green says, condolences from Ireland. Well, thanks, Ray, for checking in. I, we appreciate it. Dennis Forrester says, I liked her in Three's Company. Yeah, I think we all did. Uh, you know, when the, those credits would come on with that little song and they're they're carrying on going down the beach and stuff. I mean, that was just, you would just get a happy feeling when you when you would, the show would come on and then they would come on and they'd do all this silly stuff. And John Ritter was so good with, with falling around over the sofa and everything. Uh, Danny says, I love the Ropers. Yeah. The Ropers are pretty good. <laughs> Norman fell and Audra Lindley. I think my mind is working here for a brief moment. I can actually remember their, the actors names. Joyce DeWitt is still alive. Uh, Anthony. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure she's, uh, upset. I don't know how, uh, how old Joyce is. Um, uh, John says, my twin sister texted me earlier and told me of her death. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Cindy says, the Ropers was the second show of Three's Company, a show within a show. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Um, John says, my sister's name is Joyce. I don't imagine she was named after... Joyce DeWitt, though. That's a name people don't use anymore, Joyce. <laughs> Bobby says, sorry to hear about Suzanne Summers, but nice to see you again. Well, Bobby, thanks for chiming in. You know, I've kind of lost the uh, enthusiasm I once had for doing this channel. So I thought, I saw that and I thought, boy, I just can't, I just can't not go on live and just have a little chat. Maybe everybody can put in their two cents about how they're feeling about the death of Suzanne Summers, And uh, it's like I keep saying, it, it's a big deal. Keith E says, Alexa says Joyce was 74. You know, Keith, I probably, oh, I don't have Alexa in this room, but I, that's something I should, I should bring her in here sometime. Might be pretty helpful. Thanks, Keith. Weird City says, Weird City says, evening, Steve. Thanks, Weird. K 
he says, what did she pass from? I think it was breast cancer. She had announced over the summer that it had returned. Uh, and uh, on a side note, I also saw that uh, Michael Caine just announced recently that uh, he's retiring from acting because he's 90. Uh, the time just goes on, you know, and if you stay around long enough, if you stay around long enough, something bad is going to happen to you. <laughs> Bobby says, we also lost Mar Mark Goddard this week. He played Don in Lost in Space. Yes, Bobby, I saw that. That was just like the yesterday or the day before. And uh, again, you know, <laughs> it's amazing to me that Mark Goddard has passed away, but June Lockhart is still alive. I saw June Lockhart on um, an episode of Bewitched the other day. And I thought, my goodness, how is that possible? She's still around. And um, so Luann says, I just heard the news. I'm so sorry to hear of Suzanne's death. I loved Three's company. Uh, Nancy is chiming in saying it was breast cancer. <laughs> Anthony says, I met Michael Caine. Unfortunately, he was not a nice person. You might have caught him on a bad day, Anthony. But just because you're talented, doesn't make you a nice person. And I think in Suzanne Summer's case, I think you could just tell, you know, people can't hide their real personality forever. And I think you could just tell that Suzanne, pers uh, Suzanne Summers was a nice person. Uh, let's see if I'm caught up here. You folks are great leaving your comments. I really appreciate it because like I, what I said earlier, I don't really have anything to say unless you chime in here. Uh, Cindy says, I still can remember the joke, Jack. It was happy days, Janet, good times, Chrissy, little house on the prairie. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not getting that. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Catherine says, when I was little, I used to ask to have her beautiful sweater she wore on Three's Companies. I believe she sang with for the troops back in the day. Yeah, I did see her uh, a photograph of her back in like 91 uh, singing for uh, troops that were participating in the Gulf War. Keith E says, well, of all your famous autographs, do you have any from people on Three's Company? No, I don't, Keith. I don't, I don't, yeah, no, might have to look into that. Don, the breaking news man says the thigh master. Yes. The thigh master. Who can forget the thigh master? Nay says she did an interview on Howard Stern a few years ago. She seemed down to earth, humble and nice. Cindy says, I loved her real name, Christmas snow. Oh, that's right. That's right. I had forgotten that. Thanks, Cindy. John Roberts says, Hollywood isn't the same anymore. All the actors and actresses are dead, are passing away. Yes. And they're all going to the Pierce Brothers Westwood Village <laughs> Memorial Cemetery. I got to get out there sometime because that is the Cemetery of the Stars. I know Forest Lawn and all the others have Hollywood Forever Cemetery, but that, that Pierce Brothers Westwood Village, man, that's where the, all the big stars are. Uh, John Roberts says, my nephew's name is Daniel White. Bobby says, oh, Dan, Dan says, Step by Step was a great show too. Yeah, I, I said uh, Step by Step. I didn't really ever watch that one. I don't know why. I don't know. I guess I was busy. <laughs> um. Bobby says the original Lois Lane, Phyllis Coates, yes, from the Superman show a very long time ago. She died and she was really old. She was like 96. I say that. People might be watching there in 92 or thinking that's not so old. But, you know, it kind of goes along with my, my catchphrase that people hate when I say he was only 86 years old. That just sets people off. But 86 is not so old if you're 84. Danny says, I just checked. I have the 45 minute VHS instruction video featuring Suzanne demonstrating it. I wish I had a VCR. <laughs> yeah. You'll probably find that on YouTube, Danny. 
just type that in. Everything's on YouTube. Um, <laughs> Cindy says he's, she asked for an autograph from Joyce DeWitt when she was 12 years old and she's 56 now and she's still waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what you do is you wait till she's going to be at one of these autograph shows and then you go in there and you, you tell her that you've been waiting for your autograph. <laughs> They have them uh, in the Hunt Valley, Maryland. They have a convention down there every year, down near Baltimore. And it's only like an hour and a half from here. And I keep thinking I'm going to go. And then something always comes up and I don't go. Lots of comments. JLo says, I began the wellness journey with her and continued till this day to strive to be non-toxic. Yeah, the toxicity of uh, the foods and that uh, uh, packaged foods is is really an issue that uh, should be addressed. Uh, Alan Bain, Blaine says, wondering if Suzanne got the mRNA. Oh, let's not get into that. My goodness, you should see the comments on my videos when I when I had my in memoriam videos up. Just about every other comment was about this. Uh, injection and I, i'm so tired of hearing it i don't really have an opinion one way or another i don't know if it helps i don't know if it hurts uh i mean i've had them um i don't necessarily plan on having any more but uh you know it's just i i don't know what to say about that but everybody's entitled to their opinion uh danny says yeah joyce charges a hundred dollars a pop for those autographs plus 10 bucks if you buy the picture well i mean you know in their declining years i don't begrudge them the money a hundred dollars seems a little, a little steep though down in hunt valley at this nostalgia convention they da have down here i think they charge like 40 or 50 dollars for a photograph so that's not too bad yeah yeah linda's making a comment i'll let you read that uh Catherine says 77 is the new 50. I hope you're right about that. I really do. Because look at me. I'm so young looking and you wouldn't believe how old I am. <laughs> Bobby says glad Ginger and Gomez are still around. Ginger and Gomez? Oh, that's right. Uh, Gilligan's Island, Ginger and um, Gomez from the Adams family. Yeah, yeah. I get things. Uh, Neff says, I literally finished watching Three's Company and I'm only 30. I didn't believe it was Joyce's left. Eyes crying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, time passes so quickly. You know, uh, Catherine says, my uncle passed a few years ago and he was 105. His character was a lot like John Ritter, 105. My goodness. My dad is still going. He's 94. Maybe so maybe that bodes well for me. Phyllis Coates made it to 96. 96. Thanks, Richard. You know, when I first heard that Phyllis Coates was alive, I didn't, I didn't know she was still alive, but I learned this a couple of years ago, and I thought, Phyllis Coates is alive? I mean, she was in the Superman with uh, Superman and the Mole Men. And this was like 1951. And she was a full grown woman. I mean, how, you know, how do you live that long? My goodness. Uh, Uncommon Woman says we're supposed to live 120 years. I guess that's in the Bible, huh? Yeah, you might be right. JLo says, I just don't understand. She got out of rehab Friday and her family was prepared to celebrate her birthday. Well, some people are fortunate that way. I mean, in the fact that they live their life, they have their illnesses, and dying sudden is certainly a blessing. I'm, I'm not saying that it was that sudden, but perhaps it was. Uh, <laughs> Born Again Buddha says, I thought Suzanne Summers died at least a decade ago of cancer. Uh, Thresh Pondo says, um, here's one for you. The only character still alive from Mad Mad World is the actress who played Mrs. Sean's lady friend. 
Yes, and I know her name. She was a girlfriend of Fred Astaire. And uh, she was Barry Chase. Ah, so you didn't think I was going to get that, Thrash Bondo. <laughs> Barry Chase uh, is still alive. And she looked good the last time I saw her, by the way. Look, look her up on YouTube sometime. Barry Chase. She was actually in a lot of different things. You know, Barry Chase was the woman in White Christmas that uh, they try to fix Bing Crosby up with. Danny Kay tries to fix Bing Crosby up with the showgirl. And she says the famous line that we've been repeating around the house here lately. And let me see if I can get it right. The line is, well, I like that. Not as so much as a kiss my foot or have an apple. No, <laughs> you can't make that stuff up. Okay, Don Lee says the definition of old is 10 years older than your current age. Yes, yes. Barbara Eden is 98, last surviving member, cast member of Get Smart. Yeah, she's not 98 though. No, she's not 98. I believe she's 90 or 91. Um, uh, <laughs> celebrity juicer says Barry Chase, great dancer in Mad Mad World. You know, that's a very, <laughs> that scene is very memorable. Uh, it's crazy, man. As Dick Sean would say, Thrash Pondo says, Steve for the win. Yes. You, I bet you're surprised I was able to pull that out and not even with Alexa. I mean, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, weird said we were eternal until Sin, uncommon woman. Okay. 99, I meant OL. LOL. LOL. I can't read, but I could think of Barry Chase. Laura Kramer says, Suzanne Summers died. Yes, she was 70. She was, oh, sorry, I messed that up. She was only 76 years old. Barbara Feldman is 90. Thank you, Anthony. The uh, J Lo says the only channel that's live doing YouTube any coverage in her memory. Yeah, well, I mean, I remember in the old days, CNN uh, a good a big celebrity would die, and they would just go wall to wall coverage, and and Larry King would have a, a show that night. Like for example, when Frank Sinatra died, I mean, you know, it, it's a big deal. I mean, Suzanne Summers, she she was an icon. Um, so. I mean, I mean, it's, it's like when Farrah Fawcett died or Michael Jackson, it's a big, it's a big thing. Uh, John Thrash Pondo says, actually, I'm not that surprised. John Roberts says, I know it's shocking news to us all. Piper Laurie also died. Not a huge star, but you know, uh, Piper, uh, remind me somebody here, ask Alexa, <laughs> what, what was Piper Laurie in? Now I know she did Twin Peaks and later in her career. What else was she in? I probably know. I just can't think of it. Uh, Carrie. She was, she played, um, Carrie's mother and Carrie. Now who played Carrie? Oh boy. Here we go. Coal miner's daughter. Oh boy. This is the way it works. People don't get old. You can't remember everything, you know, Yes, Sissy SpaceX. Yes, SpaceX, not SpaceX. <laughs> She's not flying to the moon. Denise Story says, rest in peace. Neff says, you need to drink more coffee. <laughs> uh, American Graffiti, yes. Yes, your, excellence, your Excellency. That is probably the best handle I've seen here today. Your Excellency, American Graffiti. Oh, that's right, Thrash. I remember now. That's why Carrie was the way she was, and you know the way they treated her at school when she had the shower incident. Oh, my my mind drifted there for a moment. But we're here to talk about uh, uh, Suzanne Summers, who was most famous for appearing with Peter Funt on uh, Candid Camera. That's not funny. Uh, Keithy says Piper was in murder. She wrote, I think they gave her a job keeping up her <laughs> insurance. Okay. Suzanne Summers was amazing in her Vegas shows. JLo, did you see her on in Vegas? Uh, 
Did not know that John Travolta was in it too. Uh, what are we talking about now? Uh, could you, Anthony says, could you imagine if Suzanne and John Redder look hooked up and had kids? She was beautiful and John was a good looking guy. Okay. Neff's going to watch Carrie after work. Carrie. Yeah, Carrie, that's a scary movie. Remember at the end when the hand comes up through the grave? Is that is that what happened? Anyway, so I guess we've been on here for a while now. And um, <laughs> oh, J-Lo did see uh, Suzanne Summers in Vegas. Well, I guess she, she probably what she had a lot of guy dancers dancing around her and stuff. I mean, I've seen some shows in Vegas, but I, I always just see the big shows like the Cirque du Soleil and all that kind of stuff. But it would be f fun to see one of these cabaret type shows with a celebrity. Oh, that's right. That's right. Celebrity Juicer says Travolta was in Carrie and, and Nancy Allen. Yeah, that's right. Boy, it's been a while since I've seen that movie. That might be a good one to watch this time of year. So, um, Candy Camera, wow, brings back memories, Bobby says. Yeah. Penn and Teller, they had a big show. Uh, well, they probably still do. Uh, Keithy, it was just really great to see you on here, Steve. It made my day. Sorry for Suzanne. Yes, Keith, I, Keithy, I uh, appreciate you checking in and you always help me out quite a bit. I appreciate your moral support. Uh, you've been a pretty good friend to me, and I appreciate that. Seriously. Yeah. Dorothea Walker. Dorothea Walker says, wow. What? Suzanne is gone? Yes, Dorothea. She has passed away. Um, Dorothea, I saw you the other night. I was watching, but I wasn't in the chat room. I saw you were in the Blind Views live stream. He talks about uh, some of the uh, no bad campers, and I go into some of his things sometime. But I did see you there, Dorothea. And I, I saw your name, and I thought, oh, there's Dorothea Walker. <laughs> John Roberts. That was a scary ending on Carrie. Uh, Anthony says, I love Vegas. It was just there in August. Yeah, Anthony, I, I married my wife in Las Vegas at the Silver Bell Wedding Chapel. Mrs. Life and Sad Ending, also known as Julie. Oh, and Thrash, we're still waiting to see your wife. I'm, are you going to be on tonight, Thrash? Thrash usually has a live stream on Sunday evenings, and he's got to bring his wife on camera. Anthony says, I'm 51, and I remembered when the ratings went up on Three's Company, that episode when Jack was looking at Chrissy's rear when she tried to stay in their room at night. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. JLo says, I'm glad to have discovered your YouTube channel by searching Suzanne Summers. Well, that's wonderful. So even though I'm demonetized on this channel, I'm not going to go into a big long thing about that. Most of you people already know I, I got demonetized, but if I had any sense, I would have done this on the other channel where I'm still trying to get demonetized, but I got to be true to the one that got me going on YouTube. So I came on here to talk about Suzanne Summers, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did because it's, it's nice to see a lot of people are remembering Suzanne Summers and, and wanted to share their thoughts about her passing. Um, Let's see, it says, Mr. Mr. CM says, first we lose John, now Suzanne, and there was one. Yeah, that's right, Joyce, Joyce DeWitt is the last one. Thrash Pondo says, I sure will, but Mrs. Thrash will only do voice work, as it were. <laughs> well, make her speak up so we can hear her, Thrash. Thrash usually comes on, what are you on, like at 7? or No, you come on about 7.30, don't you? You all got to check out Thrash Pondo Thr uh, Ponds. Thrash Pondo Ponds. He has a uh, live stream usually every Sunday evening 
around 7.30. He'll probably chime in here and say when it is. But check in there. There's a lot of good camaraderie in there. And I'm sure they'll be talking about uh, Suzanne Summers there. I might even show up. Wouldn't, won't that be a thrill? Um, what, what other channel do you have? Well, I have another channel that I'm trying to get monetized. Actually, I have two other channels, but the one I'm trying to get monetized right now is called All Wheels Down. And it's like you're driving a car and you want to keep all the wheels down on the ground. So it's called All Wheels Down. And if you go over there and subscribe, it'll help me out. You don't have to watch the videos or anything, but just, just check it out. I'm trying to get it monetized. I do different kinds of videos over there, and a lot of different subject matters, trying to get something going. And I recently put up a video that says, that explains how much money I made from 1 million views. Yes, I have more than one video that has over a million views. So if you're uh, wanting to be a YouTuber, there's some insight over there. It's the All Wheels Down channel. And it looks like Danny sang and Thrash are saying 7.30 tonight for Thrash Pondo Ponds. And there'll be more remem remembrances of um, Suzanne Summers there. And um, so I think with that, we've been on the air for about 47 minutes. And uh, I really, really appreciate everyone coming on here. This has been a tremendous success. And it's, it's good to be able to talk about something like this. I mean, like I said, I've said several times, but maybe some of you weren't here. It's just, it's a shock. When, when people are in your, your life you know, via television and films, uh, your whole life, you know, back in 77, I was young. I was 21 years old then. So, I mean, she's been around since I was a kid. So now suddenly she's gone. And I know that's the way life is, but it's, it's hard to take sometimes. And it's, a, it's an adjustment. And um, so... I'm sure she's uh, uh, in a better place. People say that, but she's not suffering any pain anymore. And it's it happens to everyone. So with that, I'm going to sign off. And we'll see you tonight, maybe over on Thrash Pondo Ponds, a uh, live broadcast at 730. And I'll probably see you there. Hey, thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you next time.